Okay, so here's another problem dealing with overlapping triangles and some CPCTC, okay? So taking this look at this one, let's uh, do some marking of the given information. So in this case, angle B is this one up top. This can grow into angle C, which is right here. And then AE, which is this little piece here, okay? This can grow into AD, which is this little piece here, okay? So I'm gonna... Um, have to use that information to prove that this is true, which is EB, this little piece, is congruent to DC, which is this little piece. Okay, so let's start off again by writing down our given. So angle B is congruent to angle D or C, okay, and AE is congruent to AD. Okay, that's what we just marked. Okay, there's our givens. Okay, Ooh. my pen's freaking out. There we go. Okay. So now we have to get, let's do some planning, EB and DC, okay? Here's what I'm noticing about this is, is that I, I don't really have, I have a bunch of like this, maybe this little triangle up here and this little triangle down here. I don't like those because they're not really using this side information that I got, okay? So there's actually another set of triangles that's a little bit less obvious, um, but this is the kind of thing you need to look out for, okay? So I'm gonna highlight this whole side, right? Because that uses AD and it uses DC, which is one of the things I'm trying to find, right? And there's AE, I like that, right? And then if I go down here, if you notice, this triangle uses everything, right? I, I used AE, I used AD, right? I used angle C, and the, one of the things I'm trying to find, DC, is also a part of that, right? So that's like a really good triangle because it uses a lot of the things that I would like to do, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna say this triangle here right, is also, in a very similar way, helpful, okay? So I'm going to take those two triangles, right, and I'm going to say, well, if I can prove those are congruent, that'll get me very close to showing that EB is congruent to DC, okay? So let's think about what else we know about these, right? So if I'm talking about how are these triangles congruent, I'm seeing AE and AD are actually a side of these triangles. Again, that if you look at the purple, AD is one whole side of the purple, AE is one whole side of the green. So I'm going to say that this is actually one side, okay? I have the angles as well, right? I have angle B and angle C. Those are angles, so that's good, right? So this is actually an angle. So we actually have two things already, right? So here's the third one, and it's a little less obvious, right? So this one is a, what's called an overlapping angle. Okay, if I take a look at angle A here, and I'm going to highlight this again with two arcs because we've already used one arc, okay? Angle A is actually an overlapping angle because it is entirely an angle of both triangles. If you notice, BAD, there's angle A, and CAE, all of angle A is in that one as well, right? So I'm going to actually say that angle A being congruent to angle A is a third thing, right? And that's my third piece of information, right? If I have two angles and a side, I can prove that the triangles are congruent. And that's good, right? That's what I'm looking for, okay? So I don't have a whole lot to write down to prove that these triangles are congruent. The only thing that I need to add besides B is congruent to C, which again, I'll kind of transfer this down here. There's an angle. AE is congruent to AD. That is a side, okay? And to that, I'm going to add one more thing, and that is angle A is congruent to angle A, right? The angle A of the purple triangle is the same thing as the angle A of the green triangle, right? So I'm gonna say this is what's called the reflexive property, okay? And this one is a congruent symbol in between them, so I'm gonna actually write POC, property of congruence, okay? So this is, this is again, uh, when I say something is equal to itself or something is congruent to itself, we just call that the reflexive property. This looks like a reflection, okay? All right, so that's it, that's an angle. Right? So it looks like I have, in this picture, if I, if I focus on the green one, I have a, a side, and then I have this angle, and then I have this angle down here. So I have angle, angle, side. I can say these triangles are congruent already. Right? Step three. Triangle, and I'm going to start off with angle B. Right? I can call these whatever I want. B, A, D okay? is congruent to angle or triangle C, A, E. And the reason for this is angle, angle, side, okay? So that's, that's good, right? I just proved that these two triangles are congruent. That means that any part of these triangles is also congruent. But we kind of run into a problem here because uh, EB and DC are not parts of those triangles, okay? 
So I can't really use CPCTC directly, right? So here's what I'm going to do instead. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say, hey, by CPCTC, step four, I'm going to say that AB is congruent to AC, right? And I can look at this statement right here's AB, these first two letters, here's AC, that's the first two letters as well, okay? And I'm going to say this is your CPCTC. So here's why I'm choosing these, okay? I already know about AE, and I, I know about AB, and if you notice, like, the third part of that situation, if I say AB is made up of AE and EB, right, those two together make AB, right, I can use the segment addition postulate to, to say, say something about EB, okay? So we'll, we'll do that in a second. Let's start off with AB is congruent to AC, right, by CPCTC. Okay, and then I'm going to write something else. I'm going to say, okay, well, I know about AB, and I know about AE, and I'd like to know about EB. So this, here's what I'm going to write about this. I'm going to say AB, step five, okay, is equal to AE plus EB. Okay, and in the same kind of way, AC is made up of two parts. It's made up of AD and DC. So this is what's called the uh, segment addition postulate. You've probably used this before. I'm going to write SAP for the segment addition postulate. Okay. So here's what I'm trying to do here. I would like to prove that EB is congruent to DC. Let's take a look at where we're at. Here's EB and DC. Okay. So what I want to do is use the transitive property again to link these two equations together. It's going to look very similar to uh, any other transitive property you've done. We're going to link them together. Okay, and then I'm going to try to get rid of this stuff. So the only thing that's left over is EB and DC. So let's start off by linking them together. Okay, so I'm going to say that if you notice right here in the previous line, AB is congruent to, uh, I'm sorry, AB is congruent to AC. So I'm going to use the definition of congruent, step six, AB is equal to AC. If I measured AB and I measured AC, I get the same number. Why? Because of the definition of congruence. Okay. And now I'm going to substitute, and I'm going to choose to substitute in the first one. We can pick whichever one we want. So I'm going to say step seven. I'm going to make this one say AC is equal to AE plus EB. Okay. All I did was I took the AB out, and in its place, step six says I'm allowed to put an AC. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at this second equation. Oh, let's give a reason here. We just did a substitution. Property of equality. Okay, there's no such thing as substitution property of congruence. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this step seven and the second equation here. Right, we've kind of replaced the first one with step seven. So this is these are really our two equations. This one right here, and our new step seven. And if you notice, they are both equal to AC. So that means that on step eight, I can say that if I can link them together, right? I can say AD plus DC is equal to this piece, which is AE plus EB. This is the transitive property of equality. Okay. So I'm really close. Let's just kind of take a little step back, right? I'd like to show EB is congruent to DC. Well, here's e, uh, DC, here's EB. If I can get rid of AED and AE, then that's all that's going to be left over. Let's go all the way back to the beginning, right? AE is congruent to AD, right? So I'm going to do I'm going to use that. I'm going to do another definition of congruent, so step 9, AE is equal to, let me just make sure I get that right, AD, okay? Another definition of congruent. And now I can do another substitution. So again, I get to decide, do I want to replace AD or do I want to replace AE? Okay, I'm going to choose to replace this AD because it's like the first thing I'm seeing. So I'm going to replace that with an AE. AE plus DC is equal to AE plus EB, okay? So again, I just made the decision to replace AD with AE from step 8 to step 10. Okay? And now that I have an AE on both sides, oh, let's write our substitution first. Okay? Now that I have an AE on both sides, I can subtract it away. Right? You can only use the subtraction property when the things that you're subtracting are identical. Right? Even if you knew they were equal, like we couldn't subtract them because they're not identical. Okay? But now that they're identical, let's subtract them. It's going to say DC is equal to EB, right? step 11. Okay. That was the subtraction property. Okay, and it's subtraction POE. Okay. 
And now um, I just have to wrap this up. I got two things I got left to do. So the first thing is these are congruent statements. So let's turn this into a congruent statement. So this is like just clean up, right? So uh, I'm going to say DC is congruent to EB okay, using the definition of congruent. All right, anytime we switch from equality to congruence or vice versa, okay, we use the definition of congruent. And then here's the last thing, and this is a very minor detail, but it is important. Okay, So if we go to the top, the proof statement that they gave us said EB is congruent to DC. EB is on the left, DC is on the right. And if I go down to our problem, it's the opposite. right? So I'm going to actually flip these and say, hey, I can tell you also that that means that EB is congruent to DC. Right, and the a property that says I'm allowed to flip the sides, right? That is called the symmetric property of congruence. Okay, and now I'm done. Okay, so again, this is a, a pretty quick prove statement, right? We were able to get to uh, the triangles being congruent. Most of the work that we had to do, steps five through like it's eleven, were just uh, taking that information and saying, okay, well, that here's how I can use the segment addition postulate to show you that these are equal. And then 12 and 13 were just clean up, right? So again, CPCTC is going to be one of your friends to try to get these pieces of information, but you will always rely on when you're doing uh, segment problems. Uh, the segment addition postulate is probably going to be one of your best friends anytime you have to prove that parts of two triangles are, or the sides of two triangles are congruent.